very exciting video for you. Um, it's something that we literally just thought up in the last couple of days and um, I thought it would be a cool video to record for you. So as you can probably tell by the title, these are books that Darren, my husband, has picked out, chosen and bought for me and um, I can't wait to open these. So basically I did give him my Goodreads account, he had a little scan just to make sure I didn't own any of the actual books. Um, there's seven books in here, he said he picked a couple from my um, like want to read shelf and then some he just picked on his own. So I've not had a look, there's one book I know is in here because um, it sort of started the conversation of picking out some books for me to uh, read and yeah so without further ado let's open this box. So I'm not gonna look but the first one I think is the one that I know about. Let's shut that back up. Yeah, so this is The Tattooist of Auschwitz. This was the one that he sort of saw on Amazon was like, have you got this? Have you read it? I'm currently reading another book based around the Holocaust um, and it's a, an author's memoir. Um, so I will read you the blurbs of each book because obviously some of them I'm not going to have known. Um, so yeah, this is The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris and it says, based on the powerful true story of Leo Sokolov. So that's what it looks like. And it says, let me tell you about Leo Sokolov. I wanted to tell you about the 87 year old and the friendship we had for four years. We met just after his wife Gita died and I visited him two or three times a week. Sometimes his story emerged piecemeal and in no chor chronological order, but it didn't matter. As I began to make sense of what he was telling me, its significance and importance began to dawn on me. So that doesn't really tell us a lot, so let's go to the inside, yeah. There's the actual blood. Um, it says it's based on the true story behind one of the most potent symbols of the Holocaust, the blue numbers tattooed on prisoners' arms. When Leo Sokolov, a Slovakian Jew, was given the job of tattoo okay, I'm not quite sure if that's how you pronounce it, um, obviously it's in... Slovakian or German, um, not sure, um, but it's obviously of like tattoo artist, in that terrible place forced literally to scratch numbers into his fellow victims arms in indelible ink. He used the, the, he used the freedom of movement that this position awarded him to exchange jewels and money taken from murdered Jews for food to keep others alive. If he had been caught he would have been killed. Many owed him their survival. Um, and there's a bit more, but I, I won't go into that bit as well. So you get the idea. So it's about a guy who sounds like he was actually a prisoner in the camp himself um, and was given the job of tattooing other prisoners and he used his sort of power that he did have to help feed others and help with their survival and obviously his survival. So that was the first book. Very excited to read that. So let's delve in for the next book. Exciting. So this one is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. So I have seen a lot about this book. Um, it won awards. It's a, a Times bestseller. It's by Gail Honeyman. Um, but I've not actually sort of read the blurb. I don't know what it's about. Um, so let's see. Ella, Eleanor Oliphant leads a simple life. She wears the same clothes to work every day, eats the same meal deal for lunch every day, and buys the same two bottles of vodka to drink every weekend. Eleanor Oliphant is happy. Nothing is missing from her carefully timetabled existence, except sometimes everything. So that doesn't really tell us a lot. So I'm actually going to go on my Goodreads, um, because usually there's a little bit more of like a blurb on there. Like I said, I've only like seen this obviously in shops and quite a few um, other booktubers talking about it. It has very good ratings as well on Goodreads. Um, no one's ever told Eleanor that life should be better than fine. Meet Eleanor Oliphant. She struggles with appropriate social skills and tends to say exactly what she's thinking. Nothing is missing in her carefully timetabled life of avoiding social interactions, where weekends are punctuated by frozen pizza, vodka, Volker and phone chats with mummy. But everything changes when Eleanor meets Raymond, the bumbling and deeply unhygienic IT guy from her office. When she and Raymond together save Sammy, an elderly gentleman who has fallen on the sidewalk, the three become the kinds of friends who rescue one another from the lives of isolation that they have been living. And it is Raymond's big heart that will 
ultimately help Elena find the way to repair her own profoundly damaged one. And apparently it's soon to be a motion picture produced by Reith was it? Reese Witherspoon. I can't talk today. So what I'm actually going to do is once I've read all these books in a couple months time, obviously some of these may crop up in favourites videos, but I'm going to do sort of a big wrap up, um, just going over all the books and sort of doing a review. So this isn't probably a book I typically would pick up. Um, I did ask Darren if he wanted to be in this video today. He didn't, so I have to respect that um, to see like why he picked out certain books and things. Um, so I might like quickly go ask him and see why he picked this one out. So let's go and see. It may literally just because it looked like a bestseller. Okay, so I just went and asked him and the reason he picked it was probably why I thought he would pick it. It's because it's got an IT guy in it and he works in IT. And I guess he thought it like reflected our life a little bit, the way we lived simple lives and then we met together, so. That was pretty much the only reason he chose this, which is funny. Um, but yeah, interesting to see sort of, once I read it, how I get on with it, because obviously it's not something that I would have necessarily picked up on my own. Next book is Then She Was Gone. I think this is on my TBR. This is by Lisa Jewell. Um, not TBR, but like my want to read. Um, so sometimes I'll, if I see people, like booktubers mentioning a book, I'll go on my Goodreads and just mark it. So later, if I want to order some books, I can just go through and pick out ones that I thought were interesting. Um, so this says, um, um, A Missing Girl, A Buried Secret. That's what it looks like. Um, so I'll read you at the back. It says, she was 15, her mother's golden girl. She had her whole life ahead of her, and then in the blink of an eye, Ellie was gone. 10 years on, Laurel has never given up hope of finding Ellie, and then she meets a charming and charismatic stranger who sweeps her off her feet. But what really takes her breath away is when she meets his nine-year-old daughter, because his daughter is the image of Ellie. Now all those unanswered questions that have haunted Laurel come flooding back. What really happened to Ellie and who still has secrets to hide? So obviously he picked this because it's on my want to read list and I'm really excited to read this now. I've reread it. I've not like seen it in a while um, but I think that would be a really interesting one and it seems sort of like it has an obvious plot to it but I think that's going to be like you obviously think that this guy's taken her daughter but we shall find out. So that's that one. Very excited to read that. Let's go for the next one. Oh, this is The Boundless. Now, I do think I put this on my want to read quite recently. Um, it says, when Will Everett boards The Boundless, he expects the ride of his life, not a fast route to death. But when the key to the train's secret cargo falls in his possession, he finds himself haunted by ruthless killers. As the great train hurtles across the country, he will need all his wits to elude his pursuers and keep himself alive. So this is by Kenneth Opal. And that's a pretty cool front cover. So, if I saw this in the shop, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. But I'm sure I saw like a booktuber talk about it. So let's find it on my Goodreads and see what that is. Because um, like I said, often Goodreads gives you a bit more information. So again, it's got good um, ratings. Uh, so it says, The boundless train is on its maiden voyage across the country. When first class passenger Will Everett gets the key to a train car containing priceless treasures, he becomes the target of a sinister figures from his past. To survive, Will joins a travelling circus helped by ringmaster leader Mr Dorian and Marin, a girl his age and an expert escape artist. So, we shall see how that one goes. It seems different from what I'm usually used to. It seems like it's got sort of that sort of mythical magic sort of element with the circus. Um, but also mystery and it's obviously um, got that sort of... I don't want to say romance because I've not read it, but it's got that two people coming from very different backgrounds. Um, so yeah, and the writing is um, fairly big, so that should be quite a quick read to get through, assuming that um, I like it and fly through it. But yeah, that was one that was on my want to read shelf. So let's go into the next one. 
And that is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. And it says the thriller of the year. So obviously Paula Hawkins um, wrote The Girl on the Train. Um, this wasn't one that I had marked, so this is one Darren picked out. Obviously on Amazon it can give you a little bit of help in the sense that it, it brings out um, like popular books at the time, ones that are doing quite well have awards associated with them, but it also gives you um, sort of recommendations on what you've ordered in the past. Um, so again, in a minute I will go and ask Darren why he picked this one out. But I did say to him, you know, I like mystery, I like thriller, um, I like historical ones and um, like dystopian and spacey type things. So he had a general idea of what I was into. So um, he picked this one up and it says, like I've, I've never even like read the back of this book. I don't know what it's about. So let's, let's read it. It says, I need you to call me back. It's important. Just days before her sister plunged to her death, Jules ignored her call. Now, Nell is dead. They say she jumped, and Jules must return to her sister's house to care for her daughter and to face the mystery of Nell's death. But Jules is afraid of her long buried memories of the old mill house and the small town that is drowning in, secre in secrecy, and of knowing that Nell would never have jumped. So obviously we think this is like a murder mystery now. Um, so that's like, pretty cool. I'm gonna go and run down and see why Darren picked this. Um, my prediction is probably because it, was a, it says it's the thriller of the year and um, he knows I like that mystery suspense type book. So let's go find out. Okay, so this one shows Darren actually took some notice. He said he got it because it's the author of The Girl on the Train and he knows that I like that book. And I never, I was like, how did you know I like that? And he was like, we went and watched the film. You said you liked the book, so. He's got a good memory, bless him. So that is that book. So how many have we opened so far? One, two, three, four, five. Two more to go. Now the next one feels quite a, a small, sort of thin book, which is intriguing. This is Easy, The Easy Way Out by Stephen Amsterdam. I have never seen this book before, so that's pretty cool. Like I said, it is a very thin book, it's only 260-ish pages, um, but sometimes you, you want to read a small book, so let's see what it's about. I'll be interested to know his thoughts on why he picked this. Um, let's see if I can find a blurb, of which I can't. It's just got, um, like, people's recommendations. All it says at the top is, Evan is a suicide assistant, his job is legal just so let's look this one up so this must have been one that just sort of came up on um amazon and he thought i'd like it again it's got nearly a four star rating okay if you could help someone in pain would you evan is a nurse a suicide assistant his job is legal just He's the one at the hospital who hands out the last drink to those who ask for it. Evan's friends don't know what he does during the day. His mother, Viv, doesn't know what he's up to at night. And his supervisor suspects there may be trouble ahead. As he helps one patient after another to die, Evan pushes against his legality, his own morality, and the best intentions of those closest to him, discovering that his own path will neither be quick nor painless. He knows what he has to do. In this powerful novel, award-winning author Stephen Amsterdam challenges readers to face the most taboo and heartbreaking of dilemmas. Would you help someone end their life? Oh my god, this book sounds really good. Um, and this is definitely something I probably would have picked up on my own. Um, I'll be really interested to read this, possibly next actually. I'm fascinated with subjects like that and um, just something that's a bit out of the norm, like something that you don't hear written all the time. Um, so yeah, I'll be interested in that. And I think probably because I work in a hospital, um, that will sort of um, tailor towards me a little bit. So I'm gonna go ask Darren why he picked this one out, but I think it's gonna be really interesting. Okay, so Darren said he thought it was on my want to read list, which I can't remember. Oh, maybe it was. I can't remember actually putting this on my want to read list, to be honest. 
So let's just double check. Oh, it was. So I've obviously seen this at some point, but I think he picked it out of all of those because it was like set in a hospital. Um, that's what he said anyway. Um, but yeah, so it was on my want to read list, but I'm really excited to read this one. And I'd sort of forgotten about it anyway, so that's cool. So, on to our last book. Yeah, last one. And that is How to Be Happy by Eva Woods. Well, this will be an interesting one, won't it? So it says, um, it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference. Funny and full of wisdom. I love this book. So that's one of the reviews. Okay, so let's read the back. It says, Annie has been sad for so long that she's forgotten how to be any other way until she meets Polly. Polly is everything that Annie is not. She's colourful, joyful, happy. Because if recent events have taught Polly anything, it's that your time is too short to waste a single day. Polly has 100 days to help Annie find happiness. Annie's convinced it's impossible, but so is saying no to Polly. And on an unforgettable journey, Annie begins to realise that maybe, just maybe, there's still colour to be found in the world. But then it becomes clear that Polly's about to need her new friend more than ever, and Annie will have to decide once and for all whether letting others in is a risk worth taking. So that's a cool one. That definitely wasn't on my um, want to read list. Um, how cool is that front cover as well? So um, I'll, again, I'll be interested to see why Darren picked this one. Um, but I do quite like books like this where it's like... Um, like trying to be like feel good and sort of something you can take away from them and you can take um pointers from and just that sort of moral compass from so let me go ask Darren what he what drove what what am I trying to say what drove him into choosing this okay so I've just asked him about this book and it was sort of how I thought he would I've picked it. Um, he said he thought it'd be a good book, like for me to, even though I am happy, to um, just sort of open my mind, get a different perspective on things. Um, and those are the type of books I love. I have loads of magazines like that, you know, all about sort of mental positivity and mindfulness. So I'm excited to read that. So I say he's done pretty well. Um, I think he only picked, yeah, I think he just picked two, or three, no, he picked three that, yeah, three that he picked on his own, so Into the Water by Paula Hawkins, um, which he had reasons behind, this one, just because he thought it would be good, and it had an IT guy in it, but it is a very popular book, so I'll be interested to read that, and how to be happy. And then the four that were on my to be read list, all very different books. So we've got one about a suicide assistant, we've got the mystery thriller aspect, we've got this one which looks a bit mystical, and then we've got sort of the historical one surrounding Auschwitz. So, I am really excited to read these. I'm currently reading a book at the moment, which I will have a review up because I'm really enjoying it. Um, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, in a couple of months, once I've read all these books, I will give you a rundown on them and um, it will be interesting to see what I think on the books that I wouldn't necessarily have picked out in the first place. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to see sort of more videos like this. I know there's others out there like boyfriend picks my makeup and buys my clothes. I don't know if I want Darren to buy my clothes necessarily. Um, we are trying to curb our spending so this is probably won't happen for another few months or so. But it's something that I'm quite interested. I think this is a cool concept getting him to choose my books because sometimes it's the books that you wouldn't necessarily pick up first um, that are sometimes some of the best. So that is that and um, I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!